Hello, Mr. Almond here, and this is your Almond cast on measuring photosynthesis. In designing a lab on photosynthesis, you need to consider what are the inputs and outputs of the process. Now, as a plant photosynthesizes, it is drawing up water. However, measuring water use isn't a good option because much more of the water drawn up by a plant is lost to evaporation than is actually used by photosynthesis. One of the outputs is glucose, but much of that glucose is utilized as a source of energy for the plant to be able to grow and conduct metabolism, and a lot of that glucose is also converted into more complex carbohydrates. So measuring increases in, in glucose isn't necessarily going to capture all of the photosynthesis that's going to happen. Instead, you need to consider the two gases as dependent variables, the carbon dioxide gas that's being drawn in or the oxygen gas that's being produced and released into the air as a byproduct. Now, there are some ways uh, that you can go about measuring either of these two gases. <clears throat> two sensors that you can use to be able to directly measure either of those gases uh, begin with the carbon dioxide sensor. The CO2 sensor is going to connect to a LabQuest, and it's going to give you a measurement of uh, the percent of carbon dioxide present in the air that's surrounding the sensor. So as it's exposed to the air in this room, it will give me the CO2 levels in the room, or you can enclose the sensor in a closed environment, isolating the amount of CO2 in a particular area, like inside this bottle. Therefore, if you had some photosynthetic material, uh, some plant leaves uh, or some algae in the bottom of this container, then you could measure the decrease in CO2 as photosynthesis occurs. A second sensor that you can utilize is a dissolved oxygen sensor. The DO, dissolved oxygen sensor, uh, is going to measure the amount of oxygen gas that's dissolved in a solution. So if you have a liquid and you submerge the DO sensor in that liquid, the LabQuest will give you a reading of either a percent saturation or the number of milligrams of oxygen that's dissolved there in that water-based solution. So if I had uh, an aquatic plant or an algae solution, uh, as I measured the DO in that water, the more photosynthesis occurs, then the inc more oxygen I should read there in that liquid. Now there are some things to consider in either case. Uh, first of all, obviously in measuring the carbon dioxide, you need to consider the fact that you are limited in terms of the amount of space. Uh, you're, if you don't have a sealed container, you're going to lose that carbon dioxide into the air and you're not going to be able to capture all of the use of CO2 that's happening. With the dissolved oxygen sensor, you need to consider the fact that any open, <clears throat> that any open, any liquid that is exposed to the atmosphere above it, there's going to be movement of gases from the atmosphere into the water and from the water into the atmosphere. So if there is oxygen being produced here, there's a limit to how much oxygen will stay dissolved here, and much of that oxygen will actually be released into the atmosphere above it. As you move forward to the lab, you need to consider what your source of photosynthetic material is going to be. Uh, although this is a botany unit, you are not limited uh, to only plants. Uh, you may use other photosynthetic material like algae. Uh, one option, obviously, is land plants. With land plants, uh, you can cut off uh, short pieces of plant from uh, a stem with some leaves or just some leaves themselves and use those because for a short period of time they will continue to photosynthesize. The cells are still alive and still will uh, carry out that process. Uh, if the plant material is very old, after several hours or days it will dry up and the cells will die, but fresh plants uh, will be useful to be able to put into other containers and measure. Uh, you can also take vegetables, uh, any kind of green leafy vegetable, assuming that the vegetable is fresh, uh, will be able to photosynthesize uh, just as any, any land plant will. Uh, you can also take those, those leaves, and if you want to create a solution with a land plant, whether it's a vegetable or a house plant, cut off those leaves, blend them up, that releases the chloroplasts from the cells, put them in a concentrated sugar solution, and you're going to get this kind of green goopy stuff. 
Uh, and this will photosynthesize. If you shine light on this, the chloroplasts will utilize that light, uh, go through the process of photosynthesis to make ATP and carbohydrates, and you can measure uh, the either decrease in CO2 or the increase in oxygen gas that will result. Uh, sometimes that's helpful because it might be easier to be able to control some of the independent variables with a solution as opposed to trying to just use leaves directly. Uh, another option is an aquatic plant, uh, like the ones that you see in this mesocosm. Uh, aquatic plants uh, will utilize the gases that are dissolved in the liquid, in, in the, the water in which they are, uh, are habitating. Uh, when you first put an aquatic plant into a new solution, uh, after it's been out for some period of time, what you'll notice is that, assuming that the, the top is off, as that aquatic plant begins to photosynthesize, it will produce bubbles, bubbles of oxygen gas. Those bubbles will rise to the surface, and you can actually count the number of bubbles and the rate at which those bubbles rise to the surface as a way to indirectly measure how much photosynthesis is occurring. Uh, that's a, that is a more simple method, uh, but it is still giving you a quantitative measure of photosynthesis as it occurs. One other method that you can utilize is called uh, a leaf disc assay. Uh, in this case, if you take a leaf uh, from a fresh plant and punch out discs from that leaf, you're going to get these small green discs, uh, these little pieces of leaf. Those little pieces of leaf uh, will photosynthesize. As uh, in the structure of the leaf, the top of the leaf contains cells that are tightly packed with chloroplasts. So as you shine light on them, they will photosynthesize. They're going to produce oxygen gas as a byproduct, and that oxygen gas will actually fill up the spongy tissue on the bottom of the leaf. So if you put this into solution, what will happen initially is that those leaves uh, will, will be, sink to the bottom because they're more dense than water. But as they photosynthesize, and oxygen gas accumulates in the bottom of the leaf, those discs will float to the surface, showing that photosynthesis has occurred. So depending on your independent variable, you might see a change in terms of the amount of time that it takes for those discs to rise to the surface. After more time, and the process of photosynthesis uh, actually stops, respiration takes over and consumes that oxygen, and so you will see those discs actually sink back to the bottom as they become more dense with additional time. Uh, but that first part, the discs rising up, that's the part that will give you an indirect but still valid measure for the rate of photosynthesis. Uh, with your independent variables, you obviously need to begin uh, with temperature because photosynthesis is an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So temperature will impact the rate of photosynthesis in the same way that it would impact any enzyme reaction. Uh, another option for you uh, is to consider light because both the intensity and the wavelengths of light uh, will impact how much uh, and how quickly photosynthesis will occur. Uh, those are a, a good starting point for you in terms of choosing an independent variable, and obviously anything that's not an independent variable should be controlled. There are other factors as well uh, if you want to get a little bit more sophisticated with your setup, uh, but again, that's a good place to start. Uh, as with any lab, you need to consider uh, how quickly it is that you can collect data. You need to consider the validity of the data because every method is going to have uh, some strengths and weaknesses that will uh, increase or decrease uh, the validity and the ability for you to analyze that data and draw conclusions. Uh, the more data and the more valid the data, obviously the better your lab report will be, uh, so make your choice carefully. I'll send you along additional details and protocols for you to read over uh, to consider some of these different methods. Thank you.